Okay, our next talk uh, is by Stefan Graber uh, about uh, Incus and how he managed uh, to enable it to run OCI containers. All right. Hello, everyone. So, as Christian just said, I'm, I'm Stefan Graber. I'm the project leader for Linux containers, uh, one of the maintainers of Incus. I'm also the, the owner of my own company doing consultation stuff and uh, CTO of Future Fusion, which is another company doing uh, large-scale enterprise uh, Incus work. Today we're going to be talking specifically about OCI, so application container uh, within Incus in this case, and kind of what we've done and why and how. So, um, going to kick things off just very briefly what's Incus because maybe some of you don't know that. Uh, so Incus is a system container and virtual machine manager and nowadays also application container manager. Um, it's all image based, based on a, on a REST API. It's got a pretty simple CLI. Uh, it's got support for most of the stuff you would normally expect. So you can do snapshots, backups, a whole bunch of different networking, storage options. It also has a small web UI. Uh, you can use projects to segment things. So you can actually, with external authentication and authorization, you can turn it into a multi-tenant environment. It can be clustered up to 50, 100-ish servers. So you can run it at a reasonably large scale. Um, it supports uh, distributed storage with, uh, through Ceph, but we're also adding LinStore now. Um, and uh, we also support uh, shared blocks through LVM. And then on the network side, we use Oven uh, for all of the software-defined networking bits uh, that are also an option. But physical networking works just as, just as well. Um, I mentioned it can integrate with a few external things. It can use OpenID Connect for authentication. can use OpenFGA for uh, fine-grained authorization. Uh, there are a number of web interfaces. That's kind of the one we usually go with uh, whenever someone wants to see it. Um, personally, I tend to always use the CLI. So the demo afterwards is going to be CLI. And yeah, so it's a reasonably active project these days. We've had 130-ish uh, contributors last year, all written in Go, all open source Apache 2 on, on GitHub. So um, why support application containers anyways? Uh, from like all the way at the beginning of, of the project, back when, we, when, back when it was still LexD under Canonical, uh, we only focused on system containers, so running full Linux distros on this thing. Uh, and yeah, not, didn't even do VMs, it was really just containers, uh, just full Linux distros. And that, that worked pretty well, it was very useful to a whole bunch of folks. And our thought at the time was, well, you know, uh, there's libvert, people are going to be using that for VMs and they just can do both on the same system. <laughs> and we were kind of expecting libvert to become more and more user friendly, get an API, all that kind of stuff over time, so that everyone would be happy. We noticed that this never really happened. Uh, Libvert kind of remains where they were, like as an implementation detail uh, used by OpenStack and others, uh, instead of turning into something that consume, that regular users really enjoy using. So after a few after a few years of kind of waiting and to see what happened, we're like, okay, fine, we'll just bite the bullet and we'll add VM support uh, to it was next the other time. And that worked pretty well for us. It was actually reasonably easy. I think we got it working just a few months. We've cleaned it up over a couple of years to support a lot of features, but that was pretty easy. And we had, to an extent, the same situation with application containers. Uh, we, like, obviously, Docker has been a big thing for a while. People have been using it. They've been using it alongside Incus. They've been using it inside of Incus containers. Both kind of work, but Docker alongside Incus uh, has a bit of a tendency to completely break networking because it's playing, with, it assumes it owns everything and so it injects a whole bunch of firewall rules that then blocks everything else on the system. You need to go and mess with that. We've got documentation on how to fix it, but it's kind of annoying. Um, you also end up having your own network, your own storage, both in Incus and in Docker and it gets a bit annoying integrating things together. If you instead go with Docker inside of Incus, that works well enough, but now Incus generally running on privileged containers with higher security actually interfered with some of the Docker images and the way it ran things. Um, the number of storage options was quite limited in that scenario, and networking was still a bit of a mess because now you've got a network inside of a container if you want to integrate something outside of it, and it gets a bit, a bit messy. So that was kind of the state of things, but we've seen a lot of people had kind of use for application containers, uh, whether it's for IoT stuff, like basically all of the IoT bridges for like Zigbee, Z-Wave, whatever, they're all um, shipped as Docker containers these days, like all of the Home Assistant components. 
um, are, are shipped uh, are shipped uh, as uh, there should as OCI images available on Docker Hub, and people are consuming that instead. Uh, so there's no, there's no. It, it was a bit of a weird fit to try and like manually repackage those things to run them on top of Incas, and otherwise you were doing nested Docker. That that was always a bit dodgy. Um, there's like, and more and more applications effectively officially ship as um, as a Docker uh, or OCI image these days. So there was a bit of a need for that. We noticed that like, we don't want to start competing with Kubernetes or something. That's not our intention. But a lot of people just need a few containers running. They don't start scaling them up and down constantly. So it kind of made sense to add that for us. Um, also, the reason to do it, it ended up being quite easy and fun. So that's always a good justification for doing something. Now, how does it work? Well. What we do is actually reasonably simple because there are, good, there are good tools out there that simplify a lot of that. So we need, obviously, to interact with a registry. Uh, so we use uh, Scopeo for that. Then we need to fetch stuff from the registry. So again, Scopeo does that for us. Then we need to go and turn that into a viable root file system. So we're using Umochi for that, uh, which effectively looks at the layers and squashes everything together. And once we've got that and we turn it into a normal Incus image, we load the image into Incus. We create a normal container from it. And at that stage, the only thing that's different from a no regular system container is that we also process all of the OCI config and metadata. So we look at the environment variables, we look at the extra mounts, we look at all that stuff, and uh, the entry point. And we effectively put all of that in place within uh, the total config, and then the container starts up. Um, one common misconception is that we effectively have Incus driving Docker or something. It's not the case. The, we turn the OCI image into effectively an Incus image, and we run it through a normal container runtime, which is LXE. Uh, we don't use um, RunC or any of those at all in this case. We use the exact same runtime, whether it's a system container or an application container. And then, yeah, start the container, and it just works, basically. <coughs> so. Time for a quick demo um, on the fuzzy Wi-Fi, which is always, you know, fun. Um, all right. So here I've got an empty Incos project, and the first thing we need to do is actually. So for our own images, it comes pre-configured for image server. Uh, we could, in theory, pre-configure the Docker Hub because it's the most common one, but there are many other registries, so we just don't do it. Uh, so you need to actually add your registries. In this case, from Docker Hub. Uh, you can do that, and then say the protocol is OCI. And once you've done that, now you can do Docker, say Nginx, and my Nginx. And I should have the image already downloaded, so we don't need to enjoy uh, the Wi-Fi too much. And effectively, it just launched it. So at that point, hey, I've got the container running. Uh, I, I can go and check that we do have Nginx actually running on this thing which we do. And if we go look at the config, those are used to normal um, incurs containers or VMs. Usually the config is really empty at the beginning. It just has kind of some image and files and some volatile info. That's different for, for OCI containers. You can see, like if we just look specifically for that, the environment variables that are defined in the OCI image get automatically added to our config. Uh, and so they're there. Once that's done, it's, it works a bit differently than what you're used to with Docker, because with Docker, it's, I don't know, it, maybe, I miss, maybe there's some magic stuff I don't know how to do, but it's not trivial to go and reconfigure things in place, um, whereas with Incus it is. Like you, can, you can add additional amounts and stuff while the thing is running. You can change the amount of CPU memory while it's running. Uh, you can add GPUs while it's running. And if you want to change the environment, you don't need to delete it. You can just change the environment, restart it, and you're done. Uh, so that makes it quite a bit easier, um, at least for my personal use case at home, which is mostly running a whole bunch of IoT home automation type stuff. Uh, I can run those things basically forever. If I need to reconfigure where the MQTT endpoint is or something, I can just go change the environment, restart the thing, I'm done. Um, it also uses normal in-case networks, storage, uh, all of those features. So it's like, obviously, if you're running like a mix of containers and like system containers and VMs, now you can do those alongside it, and it just all fits nicely. It's on the same network. You can put the same firewall policies and stuff between them. It goes on the same storage as Incurs. If you're running a production cluster with redundant storage, then now you've got redundant storage on those two. Um, so it's, it just fits really nicely, and the actual amount of code and effort to do this was pretty minimal. 
Uh, we did have to do a bit of extra work afterwards because, for example, Incas had zero need for an auto restart policy because we were running either VMs or system containers, and in those, you, they usually don't die. Like if, you, if QMU crashes, you probably have bigger problems. And if uh, PID1, like system day in a container crashes, you probably also have bigger problems. So we never needed a restart policy, but obviously with uh, application containers, it's pretty common that if a service wants to just restart itself to reload, it just exits, the container dies, and starts back up. So we've had to add uh, auto restart, the other thing we didn't need to do in, um, in Incas is because we're running full distros or full operating systems, they usually have a network uh, management tool of some kind that does DHCP for network config. That didn't exist here, uh, so we actually needed to write a tiny DHCP client, uh, which when the container starts up, runs, gets a lease, stays in the background, handles renewals. But it also means that you can literally bridge those OCI containers directly on your physical network, and it will just grab an IP from DHCP nice and easy. You don't need to mess with static IPs or anything. All right. So um, now we get to the kind of what's coming up next. I mean, for my personal use, we're done. It works. Um, but there are always things we can do better. Currently, I don't love the fact that we shell out to Yomochi and Scopio because both of them are Go code bases. We are Go code based. We should be able to just use the right logic and not need distributions to ship a separate tool. So that's something uh, that, that we'd like to do. Just, I know that for Yomochi, it's pretty easy to do. Also, the Yomochi creator and maintainer is also an Incas maintainer. So if we need changes there, nice and easy. Uh, Scopio is a bit worse from what I've seen. It's not particularly well split, the parts. Like, it, it's not really designed to be included in other code bases, so we, we might need to look at what we'll do there. Um, there's a bunch of discussions around handling of private, re private registries, which we currently don't do, um, around how do we handle the authentication and all of that. Um, like obviously, we're, we're through a REST API with a client-server type of design, so we Depending on the authentication, if it's just using in password, we can pass that through the request very easily. If it's something more complex where you need to get like a temporary use token and stuff, that gets a bit more complicated. So we're looking at the best options to, to handle that in a way that's mostly natural and easy for those who are dealing with that on private registries in Docker and other tools. Um, something that's going to be a bigger piece of work, but for us, we'll kind of complete the set, is allowing uh, running those as VMs as well. So with, for our normal images, if you do Incus launch images Ubuntu 24.4, you get a container. If you do dash dash VM, you get the same thing as a VM. We want the same experience for OCI uh, images, so that if you launch them as they are, you get a container. If you do dash dash VM, you get a very thin VM layer with the container uh, image running inside it. So that's kind of like Kata-like design with probably a very, very similar design of QMU, VertiUFS. Uh, we support all of those things already for our VMs. It's just a matter of putting the right bits in the right places. And the last thing is um, potentially handling layers. But the reality so far is that 99% of the images we've looked at, they're so small once they're, squ once they're actually squashed together into a single rootFS we can manage. We've not really seen a good use case for that. The one big use case would be people doing AI, ML type stuff with the massive NVIDIA type base layer. Uh, there it would be a bit annoying to run three containers and have, in theory, 99% of the image being shared, but having them duplicate. But then for us to start supporting layers throughout all of our image management logic, volumes, across like a dozen different storage backend, across a cluster and all of that, it's not trivial. So it's kind of a matter of balancing, you know, the need for that. Uh, so far, it's like basically if you, if you have that need, might as well use, um, keep using Docker. And that's basically it for me. Uh, if you want to play with it online, uh, we've got the online demo that lets you uh, play with Incurs containers, VMs, and unless the IP addresses change and I need to update the firewall, normally also OCI images uh, from the Docker Hub. So yeah, that's a good way to, you effectively get a, a VM uh, on an Incas cluster that has nested VM support and that has Incas installed, so you get to play with it uh, for a bit. And we've got a few minutes for questions. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to 
steal one question, steal one question. Do, couldn't you, the, the, the layering problem, uh, couldn't you do this similar to what Systemd is doing uh, with system extensions and uh, contract extensions that you essentially have images that you compose uh, using OverlayFS, for example? That's probably how we would do it, yeah. You would want to download the, the layers and then do OverlayFS. Currently, the biggest, and that's not necessarily that difficult for us, the part that's more difficult for me is that right now in our image store and all of our internal tracking, we've got an image as like a single object. Now with layers, we're going to have to track potentially 20 different objects for an image and keep track of like who's using what. And so when we do replication of images within the cluster, we can't just have the layer replicated to one host and the next layer on the other host because then it's on the wrong machines. So it's all of that tracking logic that's kind of tricky for us more than the actual assembling the thing at the end. Because, yeah, assembling the thing is setting up of LAFS is, we've, done, we've not done it inside of Incas, but we've done it before in LXC. We're pretty familiar with the process. That's not too difficult. It's mostly all of the, yeah, keeping track of usage, when can you expire something, um, all of that stuff, which is actually more complex. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, it's a it's very good talk. Uh, I, I was just wondering about something that you mentioned, that you can add, for example, mounts in the container while the container is running. And you also mentioned that this is also uh, applicable with GPUs. And I think Christian presented um, how the GPUs worked a few years ago. But uh, I was wondering, is it possible to also hot swap to remove GPUs or external devices? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, for we, we can do hot plug. Obviously, for mounts, we use some weird tricks to propagate the mount into the container. We can do that kind of stuff. For GPUs, uh, yeah. for GPUs, we can do it uh, because we add the kind of same thing. We effectively bind mounts to the character devices that are needed in, and we can remove them out too. Technically, it's a bit dodgy because if you remove a GPU that's currently being in use. Uh, you don't necessarily keep track of that and you don't know what process to start killing or anything. So removing a GPU that's currently in use will likely let them still use it until the next application tries and then it's gone. Uh, but that works just fine. And it has been something we've worked quite a bit on Inca, so that hot plug works for just about everything, both on containers and on VMs. Like on VMs, you can also do GPU hot plug. It will do PCI hot plug in, PCI hot plug out. Now, you might get a kernel panic if you've not correctly clear the usage inside the VM when we yank it out. Um, but we, we do support that. And like for VMs, we also support like CPU hot plug and hot remove. And that works surprisingly well with the right ACPI events being sensor. Is this already integrated into the uh, patched LXD UI? Yeah. So, uh, well, kind of. Um, we do have detection for those. So they will show up as container app in there. Um, Launching them is a bit trickier uh, because it doesn't know about all of the potential remotes since it's all of the potential hubs. I think it's possible uh, using the YAML option. Otherwise, at least anything that you launched previously, you should be able to select the cached image and create more of that. Um, I know we did also the work on the Terraform side so that the Terraform provider now handles uh, OCI just fine. But I think the UI could do with a bit of an improvement for like saying, I want an OCI, and it's going to ask you, like, what registry, what's the name? Because we, with Scorpio, we can't easily go and list all images on a registry quite as easily as we can for distros. Uh, so, yeah, there's a bit of a gap there. And I think that's it. Uh, we're starting someone else shortly. Thank you.